Tuesday, September 24, The Women at the Tomb. In the Desire of Ages, page 788, we read, The women who had stood by the cross of Christ waited and watched for the hours of the Sabbath to come. On the first day of the week, very early, they made their way to the tomb, taking with them precious spices to anoint the Saviour's body. They did not think about his rising from the dead. The sun of their hope had set, and night had settled down on their hearts. As they walked, they recounted Christ's works of mercy and his words of comfort. But they remembered not his words, I will see you again, in John 16.22. End of quote. Read Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8 again. What happened, and how did the women first respond? Mark 16, beginning at verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices, so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You were looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. From the beginning of the Gospel, the reader knows that Jesus is the Messiah. But, in the text itself, the first non-demon-possessed person who proclaims him the Messiah is Peter in Mark chapter 8, verse 29. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. And this profession doesn't happen until halfway through the book. All throughout Mark's Gospel, Jesus tells people to keep quiet about who he is or about the healing that he did for them. In Mark 1.44, he tells a leper to tell no one of his healing. It reads, See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. In Mark 5.43, he tells Jairus and his wife to tell no one of the raising of their daughter. And that reads, He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. In Mark 7.36, he tells a group not to tell people about his healing of a deaf and mute man. And that reads, Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. And then he commands his disciples not to tell people that he is the Messiah. In Mark 8.30, Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. And also in Mark chapter 9, verse 9, As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. No doubt the main reason for Jesus telling them to be silent was to allow himself the time to finish his ministry according to the time prophecies of Daniel 9, 24-27. Now, in this scene, even after they have been told that Jesus had been raised, the women, fearful and amazed, fled from the tomb, and at least at first didn't talk about what had happened either. The silence, however, didn't last long. By the time we reach the end of the book of Mark, we read this in chapter 16, verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. Thus, the motif of being silent about Jesus and about who he is and what he has done is shattered. 
The book ends with them preaching everywhere. And so to finish the day, why must we not keep silent about Jesus and what he has done? Who can you tell today about Jesus and the plan of salvation? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.